Welcome to track number four of Obedience Unto Death. There are some people who think I have a certain car. It's somebody's car that I use. Because <laughs> anytime, anytime I'm going to preach, I don't use my own car. Well, I don't want people to know my car. My car is an old car. It's the same car that all my people use. I also have one. I don't want people to see my car, so I go with someone. So they say, oh, your white car. So. <laughs> <laughs> One day I was going somewhere with some, uh, I think with Bishop Nick and some others, and I called a lady who has a Benz in the church. I said, oh, drive us. So we were driving, and I said, oh, this is my driver. This is my Madame so-and-so. But unfortunately, she denied me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she didn't really deny me, but I was facing her after that. She denied me. But she didn't deny me, don't worry. But I'm blessed. I can drive any car. So I don't respect cars, but most people in the world respect cars. They will do everything for a car. But there was a time that I respected cars. I myself can see that that respect that I had for cars has gone. The more I go into God, yeah, people ask me why, where I stay. Because where I stay is not the best area. It's very far from the best area. It's in the opposite direction of the best area. Do you understand? Why don't I stay? But one guy called my wife and said, I just want to ask something. You know, why, why do you stay where you stay? Why do you stay where? We know you are the bishop of what? But people see our church as a rich church. Why, why do you stay, you and Bishop? Why do you stay there? The more they say, the more I am now more permanently there. <laughs> I see the course of the world which respects certain things. Do you understand? Yeah. And that's what we have to break out of that holding pattern. The, the world's way of doing things and running after things. When you break that thing in your life, you will never have to live in London. It's the course of the world that tells you that London is better than Jamaica. Or London is better than Nigeria. Or London is better than Uganda. It's the, the, the whole world is pattern that London is better than here, is better than here, is better than here, is better than here. Until you can obey God, eh? You will never know that actually there are a thousand places far better than London. Far! But until your heart is ready to be obedient to God, you cannot know, you cannot receive. That's why sometimes you see people who live and who come and who go to play, they look so strange. You say, hey, hey, so what are you doing? Where are you? What are you doing? So what do you earn? Many of the people, and for instance, to work in a church, do you see, is another pattern of the world. To work in a bank is far better than to work in a church. Yeah? To work in a bank is far higher than to work in a church. And I have people... You know, when they, are, when they were leaving their banks and so on to come and work, for me they said, ah, so you, what, what are they offering you? You know, and the people at the bank would be bored with them. So what, what are they offering you? We are not offering them anything. We are offering them nothing. In fact, we are rather offering them. So that when people come for interviews, we in the church, we are intimidated. Because when they mention their salary, they say, hey, millions, because people earn money, you. People earn a lot of money. They will mention that sometimes you mention the person is earning seven times what? I mean, the salary the person is earning is times seven of what is coming to, to earn. And then we, we will humbly present our own. Ours is divided by seven. Do you like it? <laughs> uh, and people want it. That's why I said that I have 
I have nine doctors, medical, and five lawyers. Chartered, as for the chartered, I have some more chartered professionals. I have people with foreign citizenship. Oh yeah. Foreign citizens. Not Guinean citizens. Foreign citizens. I have people in villages who have multiple visas to the UK. They are in villages. Multiple visas to the UK, multiple to America. They are in villages. I've sent them to villages. Yeah. We, you see, the cost, the pattern of the world eh, is very different from obeying God. And once you are, you, you are able to break the pattern of the world, usually you are working in, this, in obedience. I'm not saying that every time you have to be different from the world, but usually obeying God sets you in a different mode, in a different pattern. But it takes faith to see to be able to walk into it and see what is there. That is, there is something great and something good in it. And that's why, as I went to uh, Trinidad, I met uh, David, Yemesh, Kofi, Leslie, uh, Pastor Robert, Avita, Pastor To, Pastor Joyce, uh, who else was there? Collins, and so on. I met happy people. I met joyful people. I met people who were explaining to me who, were, who, were, who have understood the ministry more than I have understood it. And I was happy. But I was a bit apprehensive. I will not lie to you. I was wondering, these guys, are they really sure they are happy to be here? But they seem to be more happy. And they, they feel that many of you must come. Must go. You don't know what you, are, you have or what you don't have. Do you see? Yeah, and I was happy. And I said, I'm going to send more. I'm moving to desert campaign. And they were saying, Hey, it is good we came earlier. This desert. Sudan, Mauritania, Chad, Niger, Mali, Congo. We are going. We will go. Because the spirit of the world has been taken out of us. And the pattern where we follow the world and the cause, the cause, the cause of the world. We have broken out of it. We are going to follow the course of Christ. I am so different from most of my colleagues with whom I sat in class with. My life is so different. They can't understand me. They don't understand. But a few of them, one of my med- medical mates, I told him my life is better than yours. He said it is true. Your life is far better than my life. Yeah. He earns a lot of money. But you see, if they tell you, sit under this tree, we'll give you one million dollars every year. But only you have to sit under this tree till you are 63. If you will be 63. After a while, you sit under a tree and say, yeah, now I have 14, 13 million, 14 million, 15 million, but I'm still under the tree. What is the use of all these million when I'm under this tree? This the, my life is finishing right before my eyes. At the time you are set free from the tree, you have no more desire. You look at a beautiful girl and you say, Ah, what is the use of all these beautiful people when all desires for me have left me? That's why I believe in being happy for every moment. Don't plan for a future happiness moment. This is it. Those of you who are quarreling, constantly quarreling, planning to have peace later. (laughs) This is happiness. This is happiness. What do you think? This is happiness. Be happy now. 
What do you think? Is it a good idea? Be happy. Every moment that is good, make the most of it. Be happy in it. When you are beloved, be happy. Be happy as beloved. When you can't have sex, be happy that you can't have sex. Because a day will come when you have sex and you say that, that this thing crap. It's now becoming difficult. <laughs> I am sweating too much. <laughs> which doctor, which lawyer will leave his lucrative profession? And not follow the road of his lucrative profession. Unless the Lord has met him. And redirected him. And he is able to take the first step. Yeah. I tell you. He is able to take the first step. By the course of this world. You will never. You will never. That's why. You will never sound intelligent and clever to the world. That's why your friends in the world must be fewer and fewer and fewer. Yeah, if you, if you like, be close to those secular friends in the university, secular friends in your job, you will look more foolish than ever. More. Look, I don't want to lie to you. I am saying something clearly to you that day. If what I'm preaching to you works, you will never work in the secular world in some years to come. You will never work in the secular. You will work in the ministry when you wake up in the morning till you, put, till you sleep in the evening. Your work in terms of what your life is directed towards will only be one thing. God and the ministry. No matter what you learned in school and no matter who your colleagues are and no matter what your parents say, yeah, that will be your life. And even if you work in a secular field, it will be because it's very important for you to work in the secular field so that the ministry can go on. Yeah? Because some people have to do it. Like our pastors in uh, Switzerland and so on. They have to be there because they will never, Switzerland will never give you a stay to stay there. For, as a pastor, never. You need to find some way of staying there legally. And that's why I see most of the countries in Europe... Many of the Ghanaians and Nigerians and all, they are just there doing, telling lies, marrying people. Their lives are mixed. That's, why, that's one of the reasons why we don't have many churches there. Because most of the people are so corrupted by having to tell lies, doing drugs, marrying somebody, doing this, doing different things. You know? So in London, there are more legal people here. You see, and really to have a good foundation as a pastor, you must tell the truth. You can't be somebody who is, well, your whole life is confused with lies and I mean, so many illegal things. You are staying with somebody, doing this, a warrior. What, what do they call, do they still, do they still do this marriage thing? Or it's gone down? It's gone down. Why has it gone down? Investigate more. Yeah. You have to do what? Yeah. I have to go back and marry there. That's it. <laughs> yeah. So a son of this... So you see somebody, a person is maybe... Very high in his profession or in his school or doing whatever. And not knowing that when the angels look down from heaven, they say, look at the son of disobedience. He's respected so much in his bank. He's respected so much at his workplace. He's one of the sons of disobedience who never turned away from the course of the world to start obeying me. He's lived it out and he's receiving praises every day. Receiving congratulations. Receiving, I mean, encouragement from the world. One of my friends, he was leaving a, uh, an airline. He was coming to work in a church. And the, the white people called him. And they said, we are going to make you the whatever of West Africa. We are going to do this for you. We are going to be this. We are going to be that. 
And he said, the Lord asked him a question. Do you want to hear these words? He said, you are one of the best we have. And he said, the Lord asked him a question. Do you want to hear these words from these people? Or do you want to hear these words from me? Huh? Who do you want to hear those words from? God or people? Amen. Amen. May you rise in the ministry in Jesus' Amen. name. Stand to your feet, everybody, for a moment. Lift your hands to the Lord. Thank God for a new pattern of obedience. Beautiful.
Many want to change your category to become a child of disobedience. Disobedience, obedience. The key is your first obedience. Amen. I said the key to becoming a son of obedience is your first obedience, the first time, and the first major obedience in Christ. And in him, huh, sets you on a course that is easier to follow thereafter. What do you think? Are you getting the revelation? You've got it. You run with it. Great. Then what do you think? Isn't it? First one, after that it will be, you wonder what you were waiting for. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. Everything that looks distant and far and impossible in terms of God and in the ministry will become nearer and nearer and nearer and nearer. You know? It's amazing. I I remember when I was standing by Pastor Benny, Benny Hill. You know? I I was amazed that I I was standing by him. How many would be amazed if you were standing by him? Yeah. Yeah. I was amazed. I said, ah, is it me? And I have learned from experience not to go near men of God. Or introduce yourself to men of God. Or try to see them. Try to talk to them. Or try to take pictures with them. I've learned from experience not to do that. Oh yeah. I don't do it at all. So even though I was sitting at the next table, you get it? I was facing here and he was sitting behind there on the next table, facing. But he kept asking. And the pastor who was sitting by him said, "Ah, I'm sitting by him, but he's asking about you. He's not interested in me, but he's interested in you. Yeah. So when he, they came to tap me on my back and I turned around, I said, ah, what am I doing here? And suddenly I found myself talking to him. And then afterwards talking to him more. And after talking to him more and waiting. And when I was going, he was hugging me. He said, you know, I feel as if I've known you for a long time. Hey! I was surprised at where I was. And as I was walking out of the room, he called to me and said, Brother, God, bye, God bless you. He's coming to us. Hmm. I said, e, Is it a marvelous thing that as you walk on a certain road there, eh, what looks so far will become so near? Hey, hey, <laughs> <laughs> oh yes trust him for your first obedience Irene mean, what do you think trust him for your first obedience I'm not talking about giving your life to Christ you have given your life to Christ already I'm not talking about 
I mean, I'm talking about in Christ. Breaking the pattern of the prince of the air, of the course of the world, and coming to a new pattern, new holding pattern. When you stay in the realm of obedience, it's amazing. You'll get nearer and nearer to what looks so distant. Is there anybody who would like to be close to me? Would you like to be close to me? Would you like to be my friend? You sure? (laughs) You know, the Bible talks about how to be close to somebody. Yeah. How to become close to someone. How many want to know that? Yeah. In fact, the Bible teaches how to be close to an important person. If the person is important in your... Everybody is important. To some people you are precious. To some people you are rubbish. In fact, one brother was telling me. He said, he said, the things people say about you. You are like this. You are like this. You are like... I mean, bad things. He said, he said to me, about three days ago, he said to me, look, if you hear yourself being talked about, you will not recognize yourself. <laughs> That's what he told me. You will not recognize that it's you. You'll be amazed. I said, yeah. I said, yeah. Why did I tell you that? How to be close. So I'm saying that to say that to some people you are rubbish. To some people you are precious. It's like that. But if you want to be close to somebody, do you see? Genuinely close. Eh? You know how? Listen carefully. Don't forget this one. James and John said, we want to sit on your right, we want to sit on your left. How? Jesus said, can you drink the cup? Can you be baptized with the baptism? If you start to drink the same cup that somebody is drinking from, you will be close to the person. You you will now be qualified to sit down by his right hand side. And you will be qualified to sit by his left. But if you don't drink that cup, But you just watch the cup. You watch it on TV. You hear about it. You listen to tapes about it. But you don't drink it. You will not be sitting. Welcome to sit on the left or on the right. That's why Pastor Obi told me that. He feels closer to me now that he's in Kenya. Than when he was in London. Even though he used to. Sometimes he used to come to the airport. Come to see me. He was one of the close people here in London. I was always. Seeing him and so on. But I said that now that he's in Kenya, he, he feels himself close. I said, yeah, because, you see, me, as you see me here, even, no matter what I have, I've given up my life to the ministry. You see, I'm not securing myself. You are securing yourself. You are not drinking the cup that I'm drinking. Yeah, we are different. A lay pastor can never be clo- as close to me as a full-time pastor. And even the full-time pastor, unless your full-time ministry is with a certain mind, you will never be close to me in a certain way. Because when I say certain things, you don't understand what I'm saying. Yeah. Because the cup that I'm drinking from, you don't understand even. You don't even understand. You haven't bought one before. Yeah. And then the taste... So when, you, when I drink like that, my mouth... And then you are asking me, why have you made your mouth like that? The reason I've made my mouth mm, like that is because I'm drinking something which you have never drank and you don't know about. You can only imagine and theorize about. Yeah. What do you think? It's great. I said it's great. Can you be baptized? You see, to drink is to take what you take. But to be baptized is that they will take you. And you will be put through things. What have you been through? What have you survived?
One time I was wondering, why is it that I am able to sit with certain people? Like I remember one time I was sitting with Ray Macaulay. You know Ray Macaulay in South Africa? And he was talking to me about so many things. He talked freely about so many things. And sometimes I talk with uh, Bishop Nick freely about so many things. And I realize, and then they, they seem happy to talk to me and want to talk to me more. And the reason is because I've also been through certain things in the ministry. See, that's what can make you close to somebody. But when you have not been through, don't, you don't even understand. You get it? Are you there? Are you there or you've not arrived? Yeah. Amen? Amen. What have you been through? What have you survived? It's just like a saying now, but it actually means something. (laughs) So let's drink the cup together. And let's be baptized into something together. You, they've never criticized you. How can you be close to me? Somebody who has not been criticized before. How can you be close to me who has been criticized so much? Do you see? You've never been accused of anything before. How can you be close to me who have been accused of almost everything that can be done? How can you be close to me? You'll never be close to me. Because when they accuse me, you will say in your head, you will say openly, but in your head, you will say, there is no smoke without fire. You will say there is no smoke without fire. Why are they always saying this? There must be some fire somewhere. Ah. Hallelujah. So that's how to be close. Do you see? But why did we talk about how to be close? It's good anyway. Huh? Your first obedience to bring you closer. Amen. Amen. Now, in a church, okay, are you there? Are you there? We have two, always these people, two of them, obedient and disobedient. Isn't it? So don't just follow people that are in the church. And usually when there are when there's these two options, you usually have churches of disobedience and churches of obedience. Members of obedience and members of disobedience. Mercy. Abel and Cain. Yeah. You were both sons. <laughs> yeah. One was a son of obedience and one was a son of disobedience. What do you think? All in the church. May you never be a son of disobedience. What do you think? David and Saul. David and Saul. All of them were kings. One was a king of disobedience. Another was a king of obedience. Is that not so? Yeah. You can see clearly how they end up as in the wrath of God. And these are the two choices. But I don't know, but I want to be a son of obedience. I want obedience to be associated with me. What do you think? How many are ready to start your first obedience? It's going to be powerful. God is going to be happy with you. What do you think? Yeah. God is going to be very happy with you. And when you start, eh, you'll never stop. Amen. 
even when you fall, the grace of God will be there. Because you see, there are types of fallers. There are types of fallings. There are sincere God lovers who fall. You see, and as they fall, they are crying. Oh God, save me. You see, and God saves them, like David. And there are those who are disobedient and they also fall. More. Do you get it? So, be a son of disobedience. When they have the prodigal son and the elder son, these are two, these two guys. Mercy. One who just went in a different direction. Huh? And another stayed at home with his father and just flowed. No, don't say that he's self righteous. He stayed in the house, he stayed at home. Bell Church. When, I, when we were in Ghana recently, we had these pastors from America. They came around. And he said he came to Ghana in 1962. To Boku. Have you heard those? Boku. And his friend's son, it was Christmas Day 25th. And he said, Today is Jesus' birthday. Some people should be saved. Let's do something for Christmas. In Boku in 1962. The pastor was telling me, he said, I said, how did you get to Boku? He said, we drove. He said, there was no road. He said, we, have, we had a, 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 a saw in the car, an axe. We'll be going on the Kumasi road. You get down, there'll be a tree in the way. You get down and you hack the tree until you break the tree. Then you move it out and you continue to Kumasi.
Welcome to track number five of Obedience Unto Death. We are on the sons of disobedience. Is that not so? Luke. Okay. The next thing you see is that, and he went and joined. The first thing we see is what? Independence. Is that not so? Okay. And the younger of them said to his father, independence, the next one is what? Being far away. And the next one is what? Huh? And wasted his substance. These are all signs, features, characteristic of disobedience. Wasted years, being far away, being independent. You understand? A disobedient son. These are the features. Then the next one is that he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And he sent him to the field to feed his swine. The next thing is that you'll find out that you, you, a, a disobedient person, right, is close and attached. Do you get it? To other people. Do you see? So like, instead of being close and attached to God, you are close and attached to the world. Do you see? You are deeply into the world system. Are you listening to me? Yes. And then the last point is that he sent him to feed the swine that he gave his services. Do you see? To the world and to some other person other than his father. You understand? His services, his time, you get it? His intelligence, you get it? His abilities are lent and given over to another. He said, he sent him to feed the swine. Mercy. So, listen, can I tell you people this at this camp? Because, you know, I don't want to. That's why I came all the way here to tell you this. You get it? You will, if you are disobedient, you won't serve your father, which is in heaven. You will serve another, whether it's called a bank, whether it's called a factory, whatever it's called, you will serve it. Huh? As for working, you work. <laughs> but for another. Freema, is that the right name? Do you understand what I'm saying? As for work, you work. But for who? You will work, but not for him. Are you listening? Yeah. Yeah. As for work, you will. He sent him to feed the swine. Feeding the swine is one of the best descriptions of secular work. Has, God has a principle that if you are to eat, you must work. Yeah. You understand? Now, if you look at my life, I work very hard. Do you know I'm from Korea? Huh? Do you know where I'm from? I'm from Korea. I left Korea in the morning. Huh? I left my hotel at 8.45 in the morning. And I flew all day eh, 
for 11 hours. And when I arrived here, it was still day. And I came here for the camp. Oh, you are not aware of what I'm talking about. I arrived at the airport at 6. I arrived in Amsterdam at 5. I got here at 6. At 6, which should have been 7, 6, 7. And then I came here. And we got lost on the way. Do you see? And so when I arrived here, which was like uh, 10 in the night, or when I started preaching at 10 o'clock, it was like um, 6 a.m. of the the next day, so I left in the morning and I've been up on the plane on the day till the next morning, 6 a.m. And I came here to start fully at a camp meeting. Are you with me? And I preached till about 1, 2 a.m. What do you think? So work as for work, I work. There's no doubt about that. But where do I work? No. So I'm not preaching against any of God's divine principles. In fact, the work I do should make me very rich. Because I work very hard. And if you sow, you should reap. And I've been at it for a long time. The same job. In the same organization. I employ people in about 40 countries. You didn't know, you see. Yeah. You see? <laughs> Are you listening? <laughs> huh? Yeah. And I have many, many people that I employ. So I should be. I am not, all my preaching is not against God's laws of working, eating, sowing, reaping, hard work, honesty. Do you understand? It's directly in line. It's, it is a shift from the way. He said, and he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. He could have been joined to his father. We are coming to the older father. He stayed with his father. And he worked for his father. He also worked. He wasn't sleeping. He was he, in fact, when the guy came, he was on the field. He was also on the field. This guy was on the field. This one too was on the field. Which field were you on? That was the main thing. We're all doing field work. <laughs> I didn't realize that they were both on a field. But whose field are you working on? I like to be on my father's field. And I like to work for my heavenly father. I would like to work for my heavenly father. Whose father would you like to work for? Which type of father would you like to work for? Citizen of the country or your father? And also, when he came to himself, he said, ah, How many of my father's servants? Hmm? Even the servants. And when I was working in my father's house, I was working as a son. And many people have testified when they come and work in the house of the Lord. It's, even though it's work, it's like you are working in your family. So those guys who are out there in the Caribbean I see them as part of me you see 
recently, one of the people that uh, helped Dr. Cho when he started his church became very ill. And Young Cho took a plane and flew there. You know, some old man. And he prayed for him. And in fact, the guy didn't die. He was even at the program. And I think he flew there twice. You know, because... And there's somebody, you can't even easily get him to come to a country. Do you see? But you see that you are now connected by more. Do you see? And it's not just, I mean, he went and joined himself to a citizen of that. And he sent him into the fields to feed his swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husks which the swine did eat. And no man gave unto him. I mean, I'm not preaching against not working hard. Somebody who has published over almost a million books. I shouldn't benefit. Uh, any author benefits from the work that I have. And I don't sleep. I don't like the books are just written by a ghost writer. Mm-hmm. Oh, you don't get what I'm saying. What do you think? And the people who work with me, they, they are tired. All of them are tired. And people are tired though. I usually don't employ someone unless you be tired. Unless I'm sure you'll be very tired when you come. <laughs> the best job is a job that you, you are tired and it challenges you. And really takes you up fully. Otherwise, I don't want you to come and work. Because you come and you sit down and say, Ah, but what is this? When I press this, 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 it gets finished. But when you come, you now you see. <laughs> And he, and, he, and he went and joined himself to a citizen of the country and he sent him into his field to feed swine and he would fain have filled his belly with the husks with the swine did it and no man gave unto him for my father he hasn't harmed me since I joined myself to him in 1990 I joined myself to him 1991 to work for him from the 1st January of 1991 I started to I joined myself not to a citizen of the country as my heavenly father wow it's been a nice experience honestly it's been good serving the Lord not because I'm enjoying certain things but it's been a great experience I mean the way I am I will will become bored with certain things quickly do you see but God has been able to get something for me to do that engages me so much. I wish you would also have something that would engage you. And that would tax you. What do you think? Yeah. Ben, would you like to have something that would tax you? Your intelligence. But a citizen of the country can easily use your intelligence. Who do you work for? Pardon? NHS. Tony Blair. <laughs> Isn't it? Huh? 
Natasha, who do you work for? Mali, who do you work for? Stationary company, and she went and joined herself to a citizen. Of the I mean, you, it's true. She went and joined herself to a citizen of the country. Called what? Ryman. What's the name of your boss? Jerry Balland. Is he gay? Huh? A divorcee. And he sent her into the fields to feed swine. Don't say I'm against honest work. Don't say against your father is against honest work. He's not. He's for hard work. Because God himself worked for six days and rested only on one day. Yeah. So God is for hard work. But who do you work for? So independence. Far away. I'm talking about the characteristics of a son of disobedience. Huh? Far away. Wasted years in life. And what else? Huh? Close to others rather than your father. And then what's the last one? Working. Eh? He gave his services. Intelligence. Pastor Joe. Is that not so? When you were in Ghana, I wanted your services. Huh? Eh? It's true. I wanted your services. Your intelligence. You are so clever. Oh? He's very clever, isn't he? <laughs> But I was not privileged. Well, where do you, where, who do you work for now? NHS. Yeah? Isn't it? I was not privileged to have your services, the intelligence. Now to feed the swine, you need to know what time to work it up, this, what time to do this, how to calculate the food, <laughs> to calculate the food. How much they need, what is needed at this time. It's a lot of science. You know, Pastor Prince is a farmer, a farmer. He tells me a lot of things. You know, what, what you need to feed swine. Because I've been trying to. I tried to set up a farm, a pig farm. You know, and uh, one day the person who had the, the pigs, you know, he came to visit me. And he brought me a picture of the pigs. They were all dead. <laughs> I've tried to start a farm twice. And both times. My animals died. <laughs> but I've not given up. <laughs> Are you there? Yeah. You have to know how this, that. So you use your mind, intelligence, hard work in the field. Okay? Now, the son of disobedience, the son of obedience. Alright? Verse 25. 
Now his elder son was where? In the field. So the younger son and the elder son were all in the field. Mercy. Huh? Whose field will you work in? Daniel, do you understand the question? Whose field will you work in? Your father's field or a citizen of the country? Whose field will you work in? It's, it's, it's not a matter of it's not a matter of not working. When people say, hey, I hear you stopped working. <laughs> I hear you stopped work. What, what do you mean by I've stopped work? Do you get the question? What do you mean by I've, you stopped work? It's a matter of who you are working for. Where is your field? You talk about computers. We have thousands of them. You talk about programs. You talk about challenging work. It's a matter of who you are doing it for. Let me shock you. Should I shock you? When you are working in obedience, you will be full-time ministry. (laughs) You see, I wouldn't say this anywhere. It's only because of you I'm saying it. And I'm telling you this. So don't, I should I explain so many things. Uh By the time your obedience is complete, eh, you will work very hard every day, but it will be for him. You will be like the other boy, not like this one. That's what I mean. Take it in the context of what I'm saying. By the time you are working very much in obedience, you will be working very hard like me. But you will be working for your father who is in heaven. So I came to encourage you. You know, I want to give you a life's goal. I want to give you something to help you to have a new vision for your life. Do you see? Something brighter. Do you see? And the boy who was working for his father he was going to be poor. No. He says, his father said to him, all that I have is thine. He was rich. In fact, he was so rich that people have used this story to preach about, you can have your father's property, but you don't have his purpose. You can have his provision, but you don't have his vision. You can have his house, but you don't have his heart. Have you not heard me preaching something like that before? Yeah. Because he was so filthy rich. You're going to be filthy rich when you serve your father. He will bless you. Can't you see the pastors? We have become the richest people in the world. I mean, those the pastors who are in the ministry, many of them have become fantastically rich. Unfortunately, you know, it's either being misunderstood or it's now being taught in a different way. You see, but most of the people who are pastors who are really didn't come into the ministry to be rich. Neither were they after riches. Do you see? They became rich. Do you see? Unawares for many of them. And some of them have ended up teaching a lot about riches. Which is, I mean, entirely up to them. They understand. But I'm teaching about something else. And I'm emphasizing something else. I'm also not poor. Don't, don't be deceived if you think that I'm poor. As I'm walking around and... You know, yet, 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 two days ago, the millionaire asked me, he said, I hear you have only one pair of shoes. I said, this is true, I have only one pair of shoes. But don't be deceived if I have only one pair of shoes. It doesn't mean that I'm poor. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because I'm not poor. Do you get it? But I'm not after these things. And I can't at a point drive them away. What do you think? Huh? So serve the Lord. Sister, what's your name? Gina, serve the Lord. Serve Him. 
serve him. Work for him. How many want to work in your father's house? Eh. If you don't work in your father's house, you must become agitated. I've joined myself to a son. From today, when you go to work, label the, the office your door a citizen of that country. You have come to join yourself. Adapt yourself. <laughs> yeah. And the feeding of swine depicts a useless job. A job lower than your level. Why did he say that you could go and feed the swine? Why, why did he say someone like you to join yourself to a citizen of the country? Save us to serve the citizens, save us to feed the swine, save us to serve the citizens, save us to feed the swine. Hey, I'm a boy. Okay. If you know how to do computer, do it in the house of God. You know how to do come here. I don't know how to do computer. I don't know how to send email. Nothing. I'm just useless. Do you see? But if you know how to do it, bring it and do it for your father. They were all in the field. Am I preaching to an extreme message? Look at it. Sometimes I feel like Christ. And look at the thing for yourself. Do you see? Is it, am I the one who said it? They were in the field. This one was in the field. This one was in the field. Is it an extreme message? Irene, is it extreme? You haven't seen it before, isn't it? <laughs> huh? Philippa, her husband is in the field. Okay. Organizing the clothes. Sharing them. Doing washing. Hey. Cleverness. Ah, look at the people who are working for me. I am so grateful to them. Doctors. Chartered marketing. Chartered whatever. Doctors. Lawyers. They have brought their intelligence. There is a guy who wants to come and work with us now. He works at a very high level place. And I was trying to advise him to take his time. I said, brother, take your time. He said, listen, listen, listen. listen. I realized that he has caught it. <laughs> I was about to be rebuked. I just put that on myself. Saved us to show his glory. Saved us to feed the swine. Saved us. I said, Oh, he saw his glory among the swine. Okay. Saved us to show his glory, saved us to feed the swine. And you see people, yeah, you see, when we work for the swine, you see, the swine is also a ministry. You see, the glory of God is shown here by my intelligence. It's also a ministry, you know, something that, you know, is a gift. And we have a gift of feeding swine. Okay. Saved us to show his glory, saved us to feed the swine, saved us to so that's what they are calling the swine. They do, you don't know whether they are calling you or the person. Swine, come here. Swine, come. <laughs> that is why people who come full time and when they when they come, they want immediately to be at the top. They can't stay at all because when you come and work, it is the same field, but it's for a different person. And every field you start at the bottom. And you struggle, you fight, you force, you sweat, you prove yourself. Whether it's the citizen of that country or this other country or this father, your father's field. It's all the same way. So many people come, they feel, oh, when you come full time, you know, it's like, so some people feel, oh, I want to come full time when I'm pregnant or when I'm, 
you know, having my babies that will be in full time because it's like that place is the family whatever it's a more relaxed and you know we have a, whatever this and that you can stay without going to work me my friend, I tell the people I say you know what that thing where you come you deliver you will not come to work for six months those things I don't like it at all I'll give you your pay for the next two years and relieve you of your job go I don't want you to be here with me and, because if you are not needed for one whole year sometimes you see at some place they don't go to work for one year maternity leave sick leave vacation hospital special leave funeral leave different leave for one whole year they'll be in the house so it means you are not needed at the job because for one whole year the job has done without you don't bring that to the church. If in the world, certain place, they will not take that nonsense. Huh? They will relieve you of your duty. Fast. Huh? Quickly. Bring this one to me. No, not this one. This one. <laughs> your boss will say bring this one to me and they will sack you from the work <laughs> <laughs> saved us to show an eh. look I won't let me boost a little God should forgive me when I was in school I was one of the best from O level to A level it's true I won't lie to you. Yeah. A level. Huh? I had um, O level. I had seven ones. One, 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 seven. I did eight, seven. I had seven ones. The highest was nine ones, then seven ones. One person had nine ones. So I recently met a guy who had nine ones. In fact, I met him on this journey. And then A level. I also did very well. I won't tell you what I had. But I taught my, my class. My, the school that was the highest. So I was medical school. I was the fifth person to be interviewed in order of uh, grade in the whole country. One, two, three, four, five. I was the fifth person in Ghana to be interviewed to enter the medical school. And the first term was automatic. Interview or not. Do you see? Yeah. I was showing signs of cleverness, intelligence. I, have, I feel so happy that I have applied that intelligence into the church work fully. And even as a doctor, there are many things that I know and I do. Do you understand? Yeah. But I do. And I, I tell you, I am very happy that I use what I know for him fully. I have not gone and joined myself to any citizen of any country. I have joined myself to my father and I have tried to hand over whatever ability that I have. My connections to Switzerland. My mother is from Switzerland. My connections, I have used it. That is where we have churches. Basel, Zurich, Geneva, Lausanne, Baden, uh, Neuchâtel, Bern. Name it. We have them. It's also my country. Do you understand? I've used it for God. What do you think? Oh. What do you think? Yeah. You see, everything you have, you can use it. When people become presidents of countries, they use their power to give their children contracts, money, this, that, whatever. They use what they have and their position, their abilities. Is it not true? 
So I also use what I have for the kingdom. And I'm glad. You know, as I grow older, I become more happy with what I'm doing. It's true. As you get to approach heaven, it tells you see my hair? Small, small gray ones. Or you have not seen it. As I'm approaching, I become happier. I wish you would also be happier as you are getting towards heaven. What do you think? Not be singing, Wasted years, wasted years. Oh, how foolish. Huh? Ah, what type of song is that? <laughs> what type of song is that? What type of song is that? Is that the song you should be singing? Wasted years, twist after you have come for Kenwa, you have come for others, you have come for all out, you have come for, I mean, every kind of camp. Obedience unto death. Then you will be singing, Wasted years, wasted years. Oh, how foolish. After such a camp where God has revealed to you how your brain and your thinking has been darkened and reduced to a very small percentage, and you are still going to use that one to take decisions. All you are saying is that a blind man should operate on you one day. Or a, a blind man should deliver your baby. He will be trying to collect the baby from the back place instead of collecting the baby from where it's supposed to come. From. <laughs> because he's blind. <laughs> Oh, you don't understand what I'm talking about. Yeah. Amen. Are you listening? Huh? He went and joined himself. Oh, oh. It's my best prayer that you will find another field. All of them were in a field. Which field will you be in? Wow. How many are excited to be in the father's field? Ah! If it's a doctor, and the doctrine should be in the house. If it's a lawyer, the lawyering should be in the house. Do you see? Are you clever? Are you good at business? Use the business for the Lord. Yeah! Many times people have asked me whether I'm a Jew. They said, the way you bargain. And they'll say, we are not backing like this. People say, yeah, we we backing. we backing for everything. I've been asked, am I a Jew? Are you a Jew? Because I'm bargaining for thousands of dollars for the, for the church and for the ministry. All the time. All the time. All the time. What do you think? Huh? Yeah. That's the business acumen I would have been using to do business. Oh yeah. I have directed it to my father's field. From the citizen of the country, I have transferred it to my father's. I'm using my business acumen. And my business, a businessman was, talk, was talking, I gave him some advice. One day, there's a certain businessman. And he was a big businessman in Ghana. One day he reached a place and all oh, his business goes poor. It was left with only one thing. It was the only thing that I told him to do that he did. That is what he had out of all his business. I gave him advice. I said, look, this thing, eh, you are a businessman. You need to do this and this. Do it. Don't be a fool. I pointed, I said, this is why this person is wealthy. This is why this person is wealthy. This is why this person is wealthy. He did it. That's the only thing that he had. And I think he's used that one to help him in his business now. He knows. He said, hey, you'll be a wild businessman. And they look at the church. Look at us as a ministry. We don't have debt. We don't have debt. Too. We have properties in countries. Huh? You don't understand what I'm talking about. And employees. And cars. And things that we are doing. Still, not no debt. <laughs> It's business. 
And one day, I was talking to some guys who were doing business. I said, all this not get and all that is rubbish. Me, I am not a businessman. I have not done all this business. I, said, I do not believe you need to do business in this way. You have to go for land, loan this. This is what Ashanti Gopi went there. They, they have become a useless company. Now they have sold it. And one day, somebody who works in the gold company told me, he said, look, the richest gold company in the world, the managing director does not believe in debts. And he does not collect any loans. And the country, the, the, the company, which is the richest in the whole world. Meanwhile, Ashanti Gofield, when they were going for loans, and they went and they went and they were given so many millions of dollars. No, they came back, it was like an achievement. They were clapping for themselves. Like, it's like a Ghanaian company. We have been able to secure such heavy loans. That is what they used to collapse the whole company. They have to sell it to others. But God has also given me as another way. Do you understand? And that way is also what I believe in. And it also works. I'm not saying the mortgage doesn't work. It can work sometimes. But I'm saying that that one that I have, I've used it for the church. And it has worked. What do you have? Use it. In your father's field. Can I have a better amen? Amen. Wow. Okay, stand up. your hands to the Lord. Thank Him. Jesus, thank you. When all is said and done and everyone is gone, Lord, you're really all I when the best of world has leaves me feeling now, Lord, you're really all I want. All that I long for, all that I hope for, is just that sense of
citizen of the country and you are somewhere will you see your father how many long to all that you long for is to be where your father is your father's house David said what did David say one thing have I desired and that one thing will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord. When? On Fridays. On Tuesday evenings. At weekends. On which days? Holidays. All the days. Wow. Come on, sing one more time. Said and done. Everyone is gone. Jesus. Lord, you'll breathe. the best the world has. This is what happened to the boy. The citizen, the citizen of the country, he said, and he went and joined himself to a citizen of the country and he sent him into his field to, feel, to feed swine. This was the fruit of his own ways. Huh? And when the best the world has just leaves me feeling love, it's like paralyzed and dry. Without fear, I wonder what I am doing. All that I long for is just send that sense of you coming. Lift your hand one more time. Just one more touch of your loving hand.
Oh, 